Hello everyone, it's John from Double Sleeved here and we are on day 9 of the companion review and today we're going to be looking at Orion Sky Nomad. So, Orion Sky Nomad, legendary creature, bird serpent, who doesn't love a flying snake, uh, 4-5 for three, Azurius Azurius. The companion restriction says, your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Flying. When Urion enters the battlefield, exile any number of non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, first of all, I'm going to call it Urian, Urian, Urion, I, I don't know, I'm just going to call it lots of things, so apologies in advance. This card, much like Lurus, has already been taken to some very competitive levels. Um, we're going to go through whether or not it should and will continue to um and we'll go through a few decks we could see it in and then i'll come up with a few thoughts on the card itself so to start with we have seen it already and yet again shout out to croakies straight away after his lurus run he went on to a urion deck he started off going heavy planeswalkers running a deck with a load of lands and like 17 planeswalkers i won't go through what they are pretty obvious ones the key planeswalkers um everything from teferi nissa narset which we'll come on to in a bit um there was yeah just all the planeswalkers and the aim of that one was with urion's effect to get those planeswalkers back obviously on full loyalty and then minus them bring them back loyalty minus them because you know it's a bit of a, a cheeky way of playing but yeah it's what urine does then having not had a huge amount of success i don't believe with that deck he moved on to what i think is a better choice and i have to say when i first started off doing these videos and i was shouting out elementals i didn't expect to see a competitive elemental deck so soon after this meta had started um and he's got this and i believe he's still running it this meta uh elemental deck uh which runs obviously the 80 cards required for your iron to be in the, the companion um of which um i've got a few little notes 39 lands so that is a significant amount of lands it's a half your deck and then cards that you know big cards like vivian monsters advocate um which allows you to look at your top card basically and create beast tokens with counters on as well as when you cast your next creature um whenever you cast your next creature spell this turn search your library for a creature card with less converted mana cost and just put it onto the battlefield so great in terms of casting four mana spells four mana creatures and then going and getting like your key cards which we'll come on to in a minute the other big winner cards in here genesis ultimatum which again in in team of colors um look at the top five cards of your library put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand so you're just basically drawing five cards but any of your permanents you're whacking straight out uro we're going to feature in virtually any simic colored deck um that wants to ramp so he's there for that agent of treachery we'll see again quite a bit just the fact that you gain control of a target permanent and although you can't bounce that permanent with your iron because you don't own it um you don't have to you can just keep it and agent of treachery can be bounced and go and steal something else Cavalier of Thorns, loads of ramp, 
Omnath, when lands into the battlefield, um, it, it makes Elemental stronger. And then obviously Risen Reef, one of my favourite cards. I mean, M20 was ripe for these sorts of cards. Basically, when an Elemental enters the battlefield, you can put a land on the, on, on the battlefield or you can draw a card. Is basically what it does for three mana, which, yes, it's only a 1-1, one, one, but it's just so powerful. You start chucking out Elementals and like some of these Genesis Automatums or you leave Risen Reef on the table and you bounce other cards I just this card is broken with any ETB effects with elementals. Um, Mythos of Luna again, which is another one of these cards that um, it creates a copy of a permanent, and then that obviously that copy of the permanent enters the battlefield and triggers, and it's only four mana and it's in team of colours, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, and there were obviously loads of other little cards in there, growth spirals and whatnot, but that was your kind of crux of it and like arboreal grazers and everything but i think the the thing that's interesting with that deck is all about ramp all about having loads of mana and getting mana out and everything seemed to click over quite nicely um and it doesn't seem to be a lot of wasted space in there um still using a lot of um you know shock lands and your fable passages and things that are going to go and get um what you need um just yeah an interesting interesting deck build um the other kind of decks i've seen out there are your big etb effect creatures and enchantments your permanents that are going to do something when your iron bounces them back onto the battlefield so the first of which we've already seen as a companion is garuda um which as we know when it enters the battlefield each you and your opponent get rid of the top four cards into your library into your graveyard and you put a creature card from uh, among those with even converted mana cost onto the battlefield so garuda is a useful one in terms of you can get multiple garudas going one after the other and um, you just have to burn the first one and or each subsequent one beforehand and then you can also find a bunch of the cards we've just spoken about or a bunch of the cards we're going to talk about anything with such a powerful it gets a 6-6 six, six into the battlefield and potentially more arc of the sun's grace not something you would necessarily bounce but something that if you're playing potentially heavily uh, uh, enchantments you're getting 2-2 two, two white pegasus every time one la enters the battlefield and enchantments you could run with that are like omens so the omen of the sun and omen of the sea omen of the sun itself getting you more humans and gaining life so you bounce this you're getting another two human tokens you're getting two extra life omen of the sea you're scrying two again and you're drawing a card charming prince seems to come up every time there's any sort of uh, bounce spells because you've got a choice as to whether or not you scry you gain life or you um go for another bounce so you exile another creature you own um that one's better for if you play this and then you would be able to exile um urian bring it back do it all again um narset which we talked about from the previous uh planeswalker deck um is another interesting etb um especially when you discard so it's it's a, a four plane four loyalty planeswalker that you could minus two when you play it draw a card discard a card burn them for that you know deal that amount of damage and then urian would bounce it back onto the battlefield with four uh, loyalty again which is just a way of getting that free minus two um for nothing elite guard mage another one i've seen bounced around um gaining three life drawing a card and it's a two three flyer Teferi Time Raveler naturally would have been in the Planeswalker decks. There's another one that you can just get play, minus three it, remove one of their cards back to the owner's hand, draw a card, and then recur it. And then we've got cards like Thassa's Deep Dwelling, or well, Thassa Deep Dwelling, which has this same effect, but for one, one creature, um, but every end step. And this is a card that potentially is... A very interesting comparison. I've seen Thassa played by a lot of decks. 
It's a four mana card that's a six five. And okay, it's not a creature until your devotion gets over five. But it's an indestructible enchantment that becomes a creature. And it's exiling one thing every turn. 6-5 for 4. I just feel like there are some comparisons to be drawn. And alright, it doesn't smash the whole board back onto the battlefield. Basically, once. But it does one creature every turn. I don't know how much more realistic it is. And you've also got cards like Teferi's Time Twist. Um, which does the same thing as Thassa's but as an instant and it creates the 1-1 one, one. so a way of potentially bouncing your iron um, so it goes back onto the battlefield and then could do its same effect again um, risky though in both of those in Thassa and in Teferi's Time Twist because you would have to play this um, on an opponent's turn potentially and have it happen at the end of their combat phase or end of their second main phase to bounce everything on their turn and yeah you'd have to be careful with it and cause I duplicate another one that you can create a copy of uh, the opponent's uh, nope create a copy of your iron and do the same thing again as well as spark double which does exactly the same thing those are a few deck ideas your planeswalkers your elementals um, or just your big ETBs. Um, so, your iron is it? What's its what's its problem like? What what's what's wrong with it? If that's if it's got that that many benefits to it, I think the thing we've got to be really careful of, and I, I've got to be careful myself talking about the companion mechanic because I'm going to talk about the companion mechanic in quite a lot of detail in my companion review summary ranking full video um which you've got to watch because i'm excited for it i've got some good ideas for it um the the key things to continue to remember about these cards if you look at them as just a card one of the 60 it's a flying four five that when it enters the battlefield has a great effect right for five mana what's not to like that's a good card let's just play the card but you know oh, we have a, I like to have it right there so I can play it whenever I want to play it if you're playing it as part of the elemental ramp fine okay you could get this card out on turn like three or four if everything goes to plan fine However, when I say if everything goes to plan, there is a finite number of good cards that you would want to play in a, in a deck, right? Arboreal Grazers, for instance, Risen Reefs, Growth Spirals. You can only play four of each of those cards. Now, the likelihood of you actually being able to play that card, if you have a 60 card deck, in your opening hand, the likelihood of you having a four of, so if you've got four copies of Risen Reef, is 50%. One of those seven cards is 50% of the time going to have a four of in it. Okay, That's just having one copy, but that's all you need. You only need one Arboreal Grazer, one Risen Reef to get yourself cracking, one Growth Spiral. The minute you've got 80 cards, which is what your iron would require, it goes down to 36%. So that's basically going from a half chance to a third of a chance. If you need that ramp in order to get your iron out early, then you can't guarantee it in the same way you could. Now, you could say, okay, yeah, but it might take me four turns, even five turns, but I definitely have your iron there ready to play. If you're not playing any other copies, fine, brilliant. But if you're going to say, okay, I like this card and I want this card to feature, I'm going to play four copies. By turn five, if you've gone first, so you've only drawn four times, 
it's an it's an eighty percent likelihood you would have a Urian in your hand. That's without any other card draw. An eighty percent likelihood. All you need is a is a is a three card draw or cycling or something, and there is a a statistical chance that you would have a copy of Urian in your hand anyway. That's just by playing something that, like Growth Spiral, draws you an extra card. Or a Euro draws you an extra card. I guess what I'm saying here is, if the idea is to have a card definitely available, versus a card statistically likely to be available, fine. I can't say there's any other way of you definitely having a Urian, or Urian, what I'm going to call it, at your disposal on turn three, four, or five. I just can't. I can't guarantee it any other way. There isn't the tutor out there that can get one. There are ways of making it very statistically likely, but you can't guarantee it. However, what you end up doing in order to get that definitely going to have that card is skewing the probability of you drawing the other cards you might need in order to make your iron work or in order to really play the rest of the game. Because as I'll come on to in the companion review video eventually is it's just a card. And it's not, yes, it's a, it's a creature. Yes, it's legendary. Yes, it sits you know in your sideboard and you can play it. But if you're playing against any sort of counter magic, then it takes a two mana spell, potentially even a one mana spell for like mystical dispute and that is not that's that's not going to happen and unlike if you are playing a 60 card deck where your iron was just in your main deck they don't know or well, they know you've got it and that you could play it and all right there are heads head games to be played um where you can you know pretend like you're going to play it and look like you're going to play it or whatever but you can't fake it it's not got flash it's got to come out in your main phase or it's not gonna, or that's it, you've wasted your opportunity and all the opponent needs to do is hold two mana up open. So clearly it's making some goes, clearly it's it's doing some things, there's some decks out there that like it. Great, it clearly works. I guess what I will talk about in more detail at a later date is the companion mechanic and whether or not it is a benefit on that card and in your deck as opposed to just having what is in itself a powerful card that is a flying a ETB effect on a 4-5 for 3 and 2 Azorius in, in and of itself I think you should consider playing it in your deck anyway so to summarize all that all that rambling Uriani is already competitive Will it continue to be competitive as command as a companion? I don't know. I would say possibly, but I don't know. Will we see it being played as a creature? Yes, absolutely. And yes, you'd have to make some tweaks to an Azorius control deck, but potentially this could fill the space of a dream trawler slash thassa combo i think there's a real benefit to it we could also see this bouncing planeswalkers in a um you know teferi and friends or whatever it's called um so i think yes we'll see it as a creature do i think it's the best companion well you'll have to find out when I do my companion review fully, but it's definitely up there. Um, its downside is bad, but it's not as bad as some of the others. A restriction is not so much a restriction, more as a uh, requirement. Um, so there you go, that's it. I have no more to say on it. Good card, I enjoy it. I like flying, um, I like blue-white flying. I think it's great. Uh, it's a decent card. Bird Serpent's just funny. It looks like a lovely piece of artwork um, and I like what they're trying to do with the uh, with the ETB kind of situation. If you enjoy these videos, guys, please, please, please 
give me some support because uh, doing these every day, um, I just don't want to make it a boring ramble, but it's hard to keep it fresh. Um, I'm looking to do a, a more edited, much like the Allurus video version for the um, overall review summary, which I'm going to spend a couple of days on just to make it really cool. Um, so stay tuned for that one for sure. Um, tell me, do you think Orion is the best companion? Do you think it's got the most legs in it? Do you think it's the best um, creature? And do you think we'll see more play of it than Lurus or any of the other companions? Do you get the word companion and commander mixed up like I do all the time? Let me know. Uh, like it, subscribe, and we'll see you for the last companion review tomorrow. See you later.